Hello everyone, nice to see you here. I see a lot of activity in the chat right now. So this is Kate from Crocoblog and I'm really happy to see all of you guys because today we have a really special guest with us, um, Mr. Paul. <laughs> Mr. Paul from WB Tots. <laughs> hey, Kate, how you doing? Yeah, I'm. I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. Good. Good. How well, as I should now be known is is the the White Wizard of WordPress. I believe that's my <laughs> new nickname. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> um, yeah. So today we have a really interesting topic. Uh, kind of controversial, I can say, because you know. There are like lots of pros and cons, and uh, Gutenberg has uh, lots of good things to offer to the customers, and also lots of things that you know are might be questioning for us, and especially like uh, you know sharing your vision of the, the Gutenberg, uh, how it's going to develop, what do you think, and what are your predictions? I can say <laughs> uh, is also really interesting. So we're really happy and excited for you to be here with us uh, on this show. And um, yeah, it's a big honor actually to have you here with us. So thank you so much. Thank you for joining, for finding time and uh, sharing your thoughts on this really cool topic. Um, it's absolutely my pleasure, Kate. <laughs> so, uh, you know, as far as I can see, we have not so many people right now. I guess we can wait for a little bit, just, you know, guys, the ones who are already with us, you can just take a, you know, a cup of water, tea, coffee, whatever, what do you, what you drink? And, um, we'll start like in a few minutes, I can say, yeah, as far as I can see more people are joining in, which is great. <laughs> uh, yeah. it's always late. It's always late cameras. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, as, as far as I can see in the chat, people are excited as well, and everyone is greeting you. So it's 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 amazing. Um. <laughs> I can see I'm called the gray now. Is, is someone <laughs> trying to tell me something? <laughs> 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 yeah, so guys, um, actually, you're free to ask your questions regarding the topic of our today's conversation, because I know you like to ask many questions related to different, you know, plugins and widgets and stuff. But today we're concentrating our attention on on the Gutenberg editor. And uh, so if you have any questions related to that, please uh, don't hesitate to ask. And uh, yeah, so as far as you can see, we have more people, which is great. So, you know, actually, I think that, um, yeah, I guess we can start uh, little by little and uh, the ones who are late for this show today uh, will be able to, you know, rewatch it uh, in recording. So great. OK, are you ready? <laughs> I am indeed ready. Let's go for it. <laughs> That's wonderful. So, um, yeah, what we wanted to start with actually is, you know, asking you, what do you think about like Gutenberg editor? Uh, is it? any good for building websites? And, you know, I think that I really know the answer to this question already, but <laughs> yeah, it depends on, 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 on the cases and on the websites, but uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and um, give you the floor. So could you please share with us what do you think of uh, the Gutenberg editor and uh, is it good for building the websites? Okay, um, how long do we have? Is it just the hour? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think Gutenberg itself is is not a particularly solid start. I think it's one of those platforms that I can understand what WordPress were trying to do with it, but I think they went about it in a very strange way. At the moment, I think Gutenberg is very heavily being propped up by third party companies, you know, like, like Crocoblock, as you were moving into supporting Gutenberg more, you know, various other plugins that I've talked about on the channel and things like that. So I think Gutenberg itself is really relying upon those various different tools to become something that most people could actually use. With regards to building an entire website, I wouldn't try that with Gutenberg alone. I think you definitely need to have a, a good theme that you can rely upon to take some of the heavy lifting away. And also take a look at some of the plugins and third party support that's out there that fills the considerable amount of gaps that Gutenberg currently has. 
you know, you still need to rely upon those tools to get anywhere near creating something more than just a simple blog post, which if you ask me, that kind of seems to be more what Gutenberg was actually aimed at, was giving you the ability to very quickly and easily create more interactive blog posts. You know, you could create things quicker and easier with the blocks. But when it comes to then building something more complex, I don't think it's that good because there's such a disjoint between what you see in the WordPress dashboard when you're creating your layouts to what you see on the front end. And this kind of goes back to, I mean, if anyone that's in the sort of the chat can remember back to the things like, you know, Visual Composer and things like that, that was very much the same. And Divi to a certain extent, when that kind of started, you had a real disconnect between what you were trying to create visually to what you were actually ending up seeing. And I think that's where tools like, you know, Beaver Builder and Elementor and things like that, when they kind of combined the front end design experience with the back end design experience, that's when it became more useful. And I think this is where Gutenberg really has missed the mark. You know, there's too much of a disconnect for anyone that wants to visually create more intricate layouts, simple layouts, yes. You know, and with the advent of some of these sort of wireframe um, sort of blocks that are coming up for various different companies, free ones and paid ones, that's a much quicker way of starting off in the same way that a lot of people can start off with a page builder using templates, you know, whether they're block level templates or whether they're full page templates, they're a good starting point. But unlike page builders, Gutenberg is currently being propped up by a lot of third party support. And until they change that, I can't really see how Gutenberg could become what people envisage it becoming, you know, with the advent of something like full site editing, there's still such a massive way to go with just the page building side of things before you introduce, you know, an entire header, footer, template system and those kinds of things. And so I think they should really should have refined what you could do with the Gutenberg editor before they started trying to implement full site editing and moving forward. So that's kind of where I would say it is at this point in time. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And as far as I can see, we have already a couple of questions coming in, but we'll, you know, we'll stick to the ones that we prepared. And then I, I guess we'll jump onto the, the ones that um, you guys are asking. <laughs> so, yeah, you, you know, like you just mentioned the fact that like uh, there's so many page builders right now and uh, actually a big variety of uh, choosing of choices. So yeah. what do you think can actually Gutenberg uh, substitute Elementor or DV or any other theme or page builder or theme with the capability of, you know, combining things? Uh, to a certain extent, yes, you could move over to using Gutenberg, but again, you still need to have those third party tools to give you the real building block tools you have. If you look at like Gutenberg as it is right now, you've got such a minimal set of design controls for things like your typography, for global styling, you know, simple basic things that you need to be able to design something. With those fundamentals not being fully realized yet, then when you need the more comprehensive and complex things, you know, the, the more complex layouts, multi-column layouts and things like that, it's still very, very limited. They, they've kind of come on with the last iteration where they brought in the ability to start to customize and create your own loops. So it's good to see those things, but we're three years into development now and only now we're starting to see some of those tools and we still have really limited design features. So, you know, you kind of have to wonder what their roadmap for creation is. So at this point in time on its own, I think you'd struggle to replace even something as simple as, you know, an elemental free that still has so many more options included in it that allow you to create more advanced layouts without spending any money. I think the benefit that you have with Gutenberg at this point in time is that we do have so many more companies coming on board. It is in its favor, lighter weight than using a page builder, but the, Catch-22 kind of comes in, well, Gutenberg, when you add in, say, five or six different plugins to give you the tools that you need, are you then offsetting any speed benefits that you get with the page builder with that? Plus, then you have five or six plugins to maintain as opposed to one page builder to maintain. You know, it's 
it's I think it's still early days in its development. It just happens to be three years to still be in early development. So I wouldn't say you could you could hand off your page builder design skills just yet. Yeah, for sure. And also, you know, like uh, we were mentioning Elementor and also we have DV. And lately <laughs> we know that um, a lot of actually Gutenberg related content has been published in their blog and, you know, there are videos and there's like DV conspiracy theory <laughs> if they're working on something. So what, what do you think about that? <laughs> the Divi conspiracy. Now, I've only recently looked into this when the question arose and, and you sent the, the sort of question over to me. I don't really know too much about it. I think Jamie from Portal Press, who actually did the sort of the Divi conspiracy, uh, his sort of take on it, I think he had very good points there. And if you haven't seen that, I would say if the link could be shared, that would be interesting to take a look at. I don't see Divi necessarily going down the route of trying to do too much with Gutenberg. You know, I can kind of understand the logic of them saying, if we put in content out there and people can see, right, there's these limitations with something like Gutenberg, we can offer them an alternative with the likes of something like Divi. So maybe that's more their marketing strategy as opposed to going, look, there's going to be some development into Gutenberg inside Divi because I can't really see off the top of my head how they could really combine those two things together unless they went down the sort of oxygen stroke bricks kind of route where there are some integrations with you know, Gutenberg blocks where you can create your blocks inside a tool like, you know, one of those builders, and then you can utilize those. But that still feels just a little bit counterintuitive and not the smoothest way of working. But again, then you kind of have that, would you want to have a page builder like Divi installed just to be able to create blocks that you could then use in your designs? So I think it's probably more for the marketing strategy of people that are frustrated trying to get anywhere with creating something with Gutenberg and then giving them an alternative by saying, look, this could really, really make it so much easier than what you're currently trying to achieve. So I would say that's probably more the direction they're going in. But, you know, only time will tell. And at some point, we'll probably find out what their master plan for global domination may be. <laughs> for sure. And, you know, that's actually a good point that you mentioned, you know, like a walk around. <laughs> look at this and hey, we have this. That's better. Um, yeah, and uh, actually, we already talked about, like, you, you mentioned the fact that, you know, like installing either using Gutenberg plus all the additional plugins or using the page builder and maintaining just the page builder. And um, what, what do you think? Why there's so many negative feedback uh, throughout, like, you know, the WordPress community, WordPress users about Gutenberg? What do you think are, like, the, you know, the, the no nos, the, the, the cons not the pros for for this um <laughs> editor yeah i think one of the biggest things is why there's such a if you say dislike to be polite about it is because it was not something that was introduced that anybody well not anybody but probably the majority of wordpress users actually wanted and when you take choice out of the equation i know we can still use this sort of the the old editor and things but when you take choice out of the equation especially with something that powers that much of the internet. And then you expect everybody to hop on board with that. I think that's a, a difficult ask for anybody. So I think that's probably one of the reasons why there's such a backlash. And then when you force something on a massive amount of people, and it's really quite substandard, because if, if you consider what Gutenberg was like when it came out on 1.0, you know, the very, very initial release of it, other than inserting a text block, a picture block, and a heading block, and those kinds of things, there wasn't much else you could really do. And, you know, and even to this day, you can insert an image and you can put rounded corners on it or square corners. I mean, what's that? Three years in and we can round the corners of a picture. I mean, is this you know 1999 or something? So I think they didn't do themselves any favors. And, and I've said this many times in different live streams and different conversations that they would have been so much better off if they'd looked at companies out there that developed page builders for WordPress and either bought them lock, stock and barrel or bought the team, shelved the product and then took that development team that knows how to create page builders on board and then work with them inside what their vision was to create a page builder that would actually be usable by the, the broader population of WordPress users. So I would say that's probably why there is 
still such a backlash because it's just it's developing so so slowly and yeah you know you, you've got to consider the fact that people are making livings out of this they, they're running businesses they're running agencies they could just be running a website that makes money and when you make a massive change like like that that has impact you know and not always a positive impact so i think they didn't help themselves in the way they handled it by making everybody kind of go well this is the future of wordpress whether you like it or not yeah and you know like <laughs> That just just like I said before, just like we started, a kind of controversial topic, like very good things as like, you know, speed and stuff. But on the other hand, you have to have a lot of patience, like really a lot of patience with Gutenberg. Um, Yeah. yeah, And do you actually like uh, this blog based editing? What do you think about it? Is it like um, useful for basically building a website and, you know, just from your experience, what do you think about it? I think it's one of those things from my experience. I mean, I I am trying to transition uh, my main website away from a page builder over to Gutenberg for the very reason that for speed. But a site like mine is fairly simple. You know, it is literally video tutorials. So you've got your featured image, your, your embedded video, your description content. So by its very nature, it is basically a blog. So other than creating maybe a couple of internal pages that are a little bit more fancy, like your homepage and so on. This is kind of where I say using a good theme makes the whole process a lot easier. You know, I think we need to look at where it's going and consider, do we want to get on board now or do we want to get on board later? And I think the longer you leave it, the harder it becomes because it is a very different building experience. It isn't as streamlined or smooth as using a page builder. You know, for what I said back at the beginning, where there's that disconnect between the visual design and the front end result, that makes it difficult. That already makes it very difficult. So you kind of have to, you have to employ these third party tools to be able to make it something that allows you to create and potentially replace page builders in some examples. But I think without the third party tools, it re- I think it would have failed bigger than, you know, I think it's only because we don't have a choice that it's still here. Because could you imagine if we had to pay money for that in comparison to a page builder? We just wouldn't, you know? And because WordPress is free and this is a core part of WordPress, they kind of in an enviable position where they can make these decisions regardless of whether they're good for the broader community or a smaller subsection of the community. You know, maybe we are different people to your average WordPress user that literally wants to create content and put it into an existing theme. You know, the Crocker Block audience, my audience and so on, we're more about design and creating more advanced websites using WordPress as the backbone. And only by very recently, the advent of Jet Engine giving us more control, you know, in the latest version of Jet Engine, more control over dynamic information to be able to put that into, you know, uh, the Gutenberg editor and so on. And like I said, this is why I keep saying that that's the thing that's pushing the adoption of Gutenberg forward is companies like Crocoblock and other companies fill in those massive gaps that we have. You know, it has taken a very long time to have dynamic content in a usable format inside, you know, Gutenberg. And that's that's kind of sad because it means that I think if this had been thought a little bit better, we would have had an earlier adoption and therefore it may have been further along in its, its lifespan. Did that answer the question? <laughs> For sure. And actually, uh, you kind of like slowly uh, went to the second question, well, not the second, whatever, to the next question. <laughs> yeah, because like I wanted to ask what in your opinion is missing in, in Gutenberg? Maybe you can even list a couple of things that you would love to see there and to, you know, to be able to have them and to use them and implement in the projects as well. I think we need, if you, if you take, you separate the theme aspect of a website from the Gutenberg aspect. So let's, let's just say we're working with a theme that doesn't have any global controls. Because once you kind of do that, you know, you, you're reliant upon themes then, and that's not really where we want to go. So I think it, it lacks some of the most fundamental things that we need. We need full global styling. We need 
the ability to not only create global styling, but for third party plugins to integrate into that global styling, you know, typography, colors, you know, basic layout things. We also just need to have a much more refined way of working with basic building block items, you know, creating multi-column layouts, creating more interesting effects on graphics and things like that. We're really, really limited in what we can do right now. And I think that's one of the biggest problems that we currently have is, you know, without those fundamental things, we are just constantly relying upon either future development, at which point we don't know when that's going to arrive, or we're, we're reliant upon other companies coming in and filling those massive gaps. And again, we then fall down the same route as we've had before, which is that reliance upon third party. And when you have third party, multiple third party tools inside WordPress, we know that that can break things, you know? So they need to really look at what are the fundamental things that every person that wants to use Gutenberg to create something above just a blog post, what are the tools they need? Good support for columns, good support for, you know, containers and things good support for typography, for colors, for global styling. All those kinds of things need to be put in there right at the beginning. And then, then look at other things like, you know, it's nice that we, we're having full site editing, but it's still so limited, you know, in relation to the other things. And again, this is kind of like, I think we'd all flow through, you know, your global styling, your global colors, your global typography, all these things, they, they're going to fan out to all of the other things that they're trying to bring in to Gutenberg itself. So I think that's one of the biggest problems they have is that they just don't have the core things that we need in a, a format that doesn't frustrate. Because I think that's one of the things, if you've ever used Gutenberg and you try to create sometimes even just simple designs, it's really frustrating. You know, just to create something as simple as, as a hero section. So true. You just like, <laughs> sure, and this is, like I say, I think this is where they really would have benefited from having a third party company that has a page builder history to be on board, even if it's just an advisory role, you know, whatever it's going to be and just say, right, from a usability point of view, that sucks. How do we make it better? Well, let's take a look at what the competition as it were are doing and how do they make it easier? How have they made the whole process simpler and look to implement what people are used to into Gutenberg itself. So there's still a long way to go, I think is the, the main thing. Yeah, and actually, you know, you mentioned a lot of things about, you know, the things that basically we need for, for designing, for, for styling everything. And what do you think, can actually Gutenberg become a web design tool? Well, not as of now, but maybe in, in, in the future, <laughs> in our dreams. In a utopian future, <laughs> where everything is, is, is golden. Um, I don't know. I don't know if it's one of those things that it's just taking too long and whether people will just continually rely upon other companies to make it easier or whether people will get fed up and look at alternatives. And even you've got to look at the, the I'm going to say, the landscape of people that use WordPress and use page builds and use different things to see that there are people getting frustrated with various different options that we have out there. And people will vote with their feet. You know, WordPress... The biggest benefit of WordPress is its cost. It's technically free. Yes, you need hosting and so on, but technically it's free. And then you look at other products, you know, that are monthly charges. But there's a lot of benefits to using those things. It's an integrated system. Your hosting is generally included. You don't have to deal with updates and, you know, sort of third-party add-ons and all those kinds of things. So if they're trying to compete with the likes of those by using Gutenberg and trying to make that something like your, your Wix simple Wix builder kind of thing or Squarespace or something. Again, they, they haven't really gone about it in a very straightforward fashion. And I think they're very different basics. You know, WordPress itself is a specific kind of product. It operates in a specific kind of way. Whereas if you look at, you know, Webflow and Wix and those kinds of products, they are a closed, they're a closed system. So they've got control over every aspect of it. WordPress doesn't. So WordPress is sort of biggest strength is also its biggest weakness. This ecosystem that has everything and the kitchen sink included in third party tools or a closed system. Well, if you like that open ended architecture, you have all the flexibility in the world. But what comes with that is the problems of, 
you know, updates and maintenance and inconsistencies between plugins and themes and all those kinds of things, or a closed system. So I think for them to be trying to compete, which is what it, it honestly looks like, they should have kept Gutenberg just on WordPress.com, you know, which they have full control over. Whereas making it a major part of the free version and making it the main part of it maybe wasn't the best move for your user base there because I think it's a very different user base. Yeah, and actually you just mentioned the updates <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, updates and themes and, and stuff like that. And um, I know there are a lot of like um, really, how to say, Anyways, I forgot the word in English. So there are a lot of users who don't really like to update, you know, the things they have it working, it's running, it's okay. Nothing uh, breaks down. So yeah, I'll just keep it like that. I'll just not touch it. And, but on the other hand of uh, the new updates, they bring in new features, new possibilities, new options that give you more opportunities to basically uh, either ease in your workflow or, you know, give you just a variety of different tools. So um, what do you think about the updates of like WordPress updates and stuff? And like, is it like the nightmare <laughs> for developer or is it a perspective for the future, you know, to, to learn a think, little bit and implement yeah, it? I, 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 th I think it's a double-edged sword, to be <laughs> honest. Yes, like you say, updates bring new features, which can be exciting. But I think if you look at your target demographic, if you consider people like uh, some people probably that follow, like I say, again, Crocoblock and follow my channel and things like that, we're probably different to probably 80 or 90% of the average WordPress user, which probably wants to have their website online and then not have to worry about it. You know, if it's an e-commerce, they can add products, deal with, with orders and things, but don't want to worry about the technical side of things that goes on behind it, updates included. So I can kind of understand the logic of that where people, once it's done, and especially if you're not from a WordPress background, everyone says about WordPress being easy. And there's lots and lots of tutorials. And in a lot of those tutorials, it's all extolled how, how, how easy it is to work with WordPress. But what a lot of those don't impart is the fact that Building it in WordPress is probably very, very simple. Maintaining it is a different thing altogether. You know, so I think there's a, there's a definite divide between your average user who just wants their website to be online and work. And therefore, I don't want to touch anything. You know, I don't need to worry about updates. They're not for me. Site works. And then you've got the people that are, you know, big in our kind of communities and things. And it's like new features, new toys. But I think we've probably been burned so many times by updates just causing so many headaches for people when something doesn't work. And, you know, there's a lot of stress. As I've said before, it's like, it's fine if you have one or two websites, you can deal with that. You can run a stage in site, you can test things out and you can have this perfect scenario where everything is tested before you push it live and then you push it live and everything works. But the reality is, that's great when you've got a handful of sites, but if you are a business and you've got a hundred clients and they're paying you money and you push a site update out and boom, this site goes offline and they're losing money, they're not happy. So you can kind of understand that your typical agency web designer, so on that's using WordPress, it's a nightmare. It is an absolute nightmare. You know, you see updates and it's like, oh, I don't want to do this. <laughs> On a Friday afternoon, it's like, oh. <laughs> really updates you know and it's never one update it's always five or seven or ten and you just look at it and think because there's such a knock-on effect you like like elemental updates and it's like elemental update and then there's 10 other ones that are plugins and you know i've got to update all those oh, i don't want to do this you know and, and, and we are you, you can't help it once you've been burnt where a site goes offline and the stress that can go with that no it's, it's it's not a nice way. And you can understand why people move away to systems like Webflow and so on, because they don't have to worry about those things. Yes, it's maybe more expensive, but the time that you have to invest in it being the designer, developer, you know, whatever, that still has to be factored into the cost of everything. You know, and I think, yeah, we've, we've all lived the dream of updating something you think is simple and then spending the entire weekend trying to fix what it doesn't work anymore. Yeah, just close your eyes and press the button on the update. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. 
Um, as far as I can see, we're um, getting closer to our pause. So I'll just, um, guys, just go ahead and grab yourself, you know, some chips or water or whatever, and we'll be back right in a minute. <laughs> Okay, guys, are you back? Do you have your, I don't know, tea, coffee, water, beer, or whatever with you? Yeah, Paul, you're, you're drinking water, right? 
That's good. I am drinking water. <laughs> it's not laced with vodka at all. <laughs> yeah, well, it's your place now. We have um, some a couple of hours difference. Yeah, so um, that was actually a really interesting conversation uh, prior to the pause. And, I, I, you know, for me personally, I was really happy to hear uh, your answers and, you know, your predictions and stuff. So it's it's actually a really interesting topic. So uh, as far as I can see, we have a lot of questions in, in the chat. So I guess we'll probably start um, from the ones that came first. So Eric199 um, says this, uh, asks this question. So I'd like to know what impact Gutenberg will have on Elementor. I've personally come to love Elementor and I feel like the Gutenberg editor isn't as intuitive and very clunky. So what can you say about that? You're spot on. Um, it is very, very clunky in comparison to a tool like Elementor. What kind of impact is it going to have? I think if you are a page builder user and you were using Elementor, I don't see why you would want to move over to Gutenberg. So I think those kinds of users that are using a page builder like that, I don't see that market share is going to go in favor of Gutenberg unless you want to get to the point of just taking page builders out of the equation completely. I mean, if you take a look at something like uh, Elemental, the new beta release that they're releasing, uh, which is kind of like out there, I think it's 3.6, where they're moving away from the divception has kind of been coined when it comes to sort of page builders. There's just so many divs being used to do such simple things. And they're moving over to the container element. So I'm interested to see how they'll go with that. Because one of the biggest barriers of anybody using a page builder you know, like Elemental is that speed impact that it has. Because by its very nature, you, know, you, you, you have to balance ease of use, which is what a page builder like Elemental gives you, with the negative side of things, which is extra code or bloat, if you want to call it that. So they do seem to be making strides into reducing that. I think moving to the container model, I haven't tested it out. I literally took a look five minutes before I started talking to Kate. So I'm going to be taking a look at that and see real world, how they compare with the old way of doing things to the way the container model is, is working. So I think if, if page builders can reduce the amount of bloat and speed impact that they have on design, then I think page builders will definitely win out for people like us that want to develop and design more comprehensive sites or more unique sites over a tool like Gutenberg. So I think people that are moving away are people that want to sort of develop simpler sites, or they can see that moving to Gutenberg now is an easier path to faster websites than waiting for your typical page builder to become, you know, lighter weight, easier to work with, and, you know, less having to deal with optimization and messing about with third party plugins and all the things you kind of have to do to offset the intrinsic issues that page builder bloat brings with it. So I hope that answers your question that I don't think Elementor has really got anything to worry about right now from Gutenberg for your typical user. Uh, we have another question from Yanis Sintas. Do you believe that Gutenberg is the future of WP editing or builders will prevail? I guess you kind of answered to... this question already. <laughs> I, yeah, I probably did. I'll, I'll answer it quickly anyway, um, just to make sure that you know didn't miss it the first time. I probably waffled on about it. Um, I think, let me just check the question. <laughs> is that going all right? Do I think it's the future of WordPress editing? We have to consider the fact that everything like Elementor, Beaver Builder, those kinds of things, they're third party companies that are separate to WordPress. So if WordPress tomorrow turned around and said, right, we're not gonna support those page builders anymore, everything is gonna be Gutenberg only, they could wipe those page builders off the WordPress face of the earth, should we say. Do I think they would do that? No, I think it would be a silly way of, of moving forward as a business. But we do have to consider the fact that Gutenberg is built in to WordPress. So it's always going to be there for the foreseeable future unless something completely strange changes that. I think they've invested too much time, effort, and probably money into doing this to suddenly drop it. So we have to consider the fact that while WordPress is happy with page builders, then we'll have page builders. Will Gutenberg go away? 
probably not for the foreseeable future, not unless WordPress, like I say, changes something completely different about its core architecture. Hope that answered the question anyway. Um, there is another question from the guy with a really long and strange nickname that I think I will <laughs> misspell for sure. So sorry for that. Uh, you know, just, uh, yeah, I'll ask the question. So what is better to use between Gutenberg and Elementor? If I want to use in a deep way, conditional visibility and complicated forms in the site. At this point in time, you're probably still better off, unless you want to get in and you're happy hand coding or you're happy using multiple different tools. I think unless you can hand code and you're comfortable doing that side of things, then you are still going to be much better off using page builders. If you take a look at what Crockerblock are doing with Jet Engine and some of the other tools that are kind of now moving over into Gutenberg integration, that's going to open those doors up over the next 6, 12, 18 months, I think, and give us more options when it comes to creating more advanced dynamic kinds of websites at this point in time we are still fairly limited in what we can we can do without employing third-party tools so i still think you'd be better off staying with your page builder if you want to create those more comprehensive complex sites like the kinds of things that i've covered before you know real estate websites and where you have lots of different moving pieces unless you want to hand code and employ lots and lots of third party tools to, to kind of mash all those things together to get an end result. I would say your page builder like Elemental is still the better way of going for the foreseeable future. And we have another question from Simon Clay. Uh, Gutenberg seems good for speed, but can it really deliver the dynamic items that Elementor Jet Elements can? An example, integrate ACF, CPT, UI, etc. cetera. Um, Elementor form actions, software email is uh, Elementor form actions, software email, etc. Interesting. So I think it's maybe like the uh, post submit actions of you know when the, when the form is submitted yeah yeah go ahead <laughs> uh the thing is it's not really gutenberg you're talking about there and that, that's the thing it's gutenberg doesn't have built-in forms if you want to do those kinds of things but gutenberg doesn't have custom post types if you want to work with those things gutenberg doesn't have you know meta fields so you're already taking gutenberg out of the equation to be able to create those kind of sites so once you start looking at form plugins, well, the form plugin is going to handle the forms, the after submit actions, those kinds of things. ACF is going to handle the meta fields, custom post type, you know, CPT UI, or if you're doing it manually, or if you're using tools like Jet Engine, you know, Jet Engine is going to give you a better ecosystem. It sounds like a sales pitch, doesn't it? A better ecosystem because you have all those things set to work together. So you have one kind of set of tools. Gutenberg just then becomes the place that you drop short codes in or you insert the relevant element into it. So Gutenberg isn't really doing the heavy lifting there. That just becomes this really sort of thing that probably just gets in the way more than it does, you know, make it easier to work with. So that, that's kind of the way I would look at, you know, there are tools that are making working with dynamic content inside the Gutenberg editor easier, but Gutenberg itself isn't doing that. You know, and I don't, I don't really see Gutenberg ever really doing that. You're going to have to start creating your own custom blocks that integrate with ACF or you're using ACF short codes and, you know, different things like that. So yeah, that, that's kind of what I, the way I would look at it at this point, hopefully that will change, you know, and again, hopefully this will be something that will be embraced. But if we consider the fact we're three years in and we don't have a lot of the fundamentals, I don't really see them suddenly thinking we need to put a load of dynamic tools into this because I don't think that's the market they see themselves targeting with Gutenberg. Great. And we have a question from Peter from the Ultimate WordPress uh, Guide YouTube channel. Uh, apart from performance and simplicity as add-ons aside, um, at the moment, what edge does Gutenberg have that page builders don't? Speed. It's, 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 it's simple as that. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it is. It's speed is the bottom line, I think, because you don't have the bloat that naturally comes with adding plugins on top to create layouts. But we are still limited to the kinds of layouts that you can create. So speed is its biggest strength at this point in time. 
Um, and like I said, back at the beginning of, of sort of the talk, once you start to add in extra tools to make it a much better design environment, and you know, again, if you want to include things like dynamic content and things, then you start to offset the benefit of that speed by adding third-party plugins in, and you're then dependent upon how well they're coded and how well they integrate with Gutenberg, and you have that, you know, that update hell we talked about when you know something changes, you know. So Gutenberg itself is, I think we just need to consider Gutenberg itself is just very, very basic at this point in time. You know, we can do some simple things with it, but it's just reliant upon other things to make it a truly usable design tool. And I just questioned whether that was the, the whole point behind Gutenberg and why they've developed it in the way they have is that it's not meant to replace full site designing. You know, yes, you can edit your header. Yes, you can edit your footer with full site editing, but it's still very basic what you do. You know, it's, it's still all inside the WordPress way of working. They're making strides, you know, with the way widgets work, that's changing, that's much better. But none of it really feels centered around the designer. It's centered around the content that's actually going to go onto the website. And I think they've kind of, WordPress has kind of separated itself a little bit. The design is covered by the theme. So whether you buy a theme or you design your own theme. And even with full site editing, I still think a lot of the heavy lifting falls back on the theme to make it anything other than really basic, you know, really simple websites. So that's what I would kind of go with it. That's what my thoughts are. Great. And also, um, there is interesting question. Okay, the one that about Jet Engine and Jet Booking will keep it for later. Guys, please ask the questions regarding the topic. <laughs> um, yeah, so, oh, that's a good one. Uh, Richard Wade is asking, oh, would Paul like to be a consult consultant to improve Gutenberg? <laughs> <laughs> nice one, Richard. I like, I like where you're going with that. Um, no, I don't think I would. I, I, I think I wouldn't be objective enough in it because I think I, I, my passion, as, as probably most people that know me, I like more designing more advanced kind of websites with WordPress and various different tools. So I think the direction that Gutenberg's going in, I don't think I would add any real um, positive impact upon the development because I don't think that I would look at it in the same way as probably someone that would want to use a tool like Gutenberg would. So, you know, my strength is not in that side of things, I don't think. But nice question, Rich. <laughs> well, actually, and I think that, you know, to be someone who consults, um, you know, things like Gutenberg, uh, you really need to have these quality assurance skills and stuff like that. Uh, so, yeah. Anyways, um, uh, yeah, go ahead. I think I think Gutenberg. Um, if anyone's ever designed, you know, worked with companies or organizations that design by committee, which basically means that everything that you try to do goes in front of ten people, so every decision is really difficult. And I think that kind of feels what Gutenberg is to be developed like is that there's lots of different departments. You know, there's accessibility. There's all the different things that kind of make up what WordPress needs to be to grow and expand and become more successful. And the difficulty with that is everyone's got an agenda. Every different portion of the people that are involved have an agenda for what they want. So accessibility wants certain things. And then that has to flow down to, you know, the, the ones that are making the different elements inside there and the impact that it has on that and the impact upon the code and then the, the full site editing and the themes that are going to be used for it. And I think the difficulty is, is, that's the way that it's being and is designed. So there's no clear vision that we can kind of hop on board with. We can't think, well, okay, in a year's time or 18 months time, this is where it's going to be. And these are the things we're going to have because so many other people are making decisions that impact everything else that makes up the whole of Gutenberg and WordPress. Yeah. And also there is another question from uh, Anter. Uh, how can we make Gutenberg or Elementor easier for clients to use? This probably is one of the top questions that every developer who's using, <laughs> you know, different <laughs> plugins and stuff is asking himself. Exactly. 
I would say the easiest, well, I can't say necessarily the easiest way, but I think the best way to approach this is to take the customer or the client out of WordPress. I mean, I've created lots of different videos on front-end dashboards, and the whole point of the front-end dashboard is to give the client control of what they need to have access to, whether that's you know WooCommerce, whether that's just content or you know custom post types, whatever it is, because then you can create a dashboard that you will know that makes it easy for the end user, your client, to be able to do what they need to do without taking the overwhelmingness, that's even a word, of logging into WordPress. I mean, we are used to WordPress. We log into it and we use it every single day. So it, it holds no fear. But put yourself in a client that isn't necessarily that tech savvy and they log into it and all they want to do is change the price of a product. And they, they look at it, they're going, where do I go? What do I do? You know, even WooCommerce itself, if you log into that, just looking at adding a product, especially when you look at variations and all those kinds of things, that can be terrifying. I've still got clients now that for me are going, Paul, yeah. You know, um, I want to change the price on, on that product. Yeah. How do I do it? Uh, I know you showed me 10 times before, but I still have no idea how to do it. So I'll just log in and do it for you. Oh, that'd be great if you could. And that kind of, I think that kind of sums up what a lot of people's experience with a tool like WordPress is. So front-end dashboards means you can strip out all that excess fear-inducing stuff that you know we don't pay any attention to. And you create something then that you can design it, you can style it, you can brand it, you can do whatever you want with it and create something that is truly usable and gives the client access to what they need to have access to and not all the excess without having to, again, deal with a pile of plugins to re reduce what could be done on the navigation and what features they can have because they never work 100% the way you want. And also, uh, there is a really interesting question actually to both of us. Um, okay. If Crocoblock decides to implement another builder outside of Gutenberg and Elementor, which one should it be, or would it be, uh, Bricks Oxygen DV? Um, well, I can start right here. So as of now, guys, we are developing, uh, you know, the Gutenberg and Elementor path. So we're concentrating more on that. And if if the moment comes that uh, we decide to look into some other builders, uh, then we'll probably decide which one is best. So I, I don't have that information because like I'm not from the developers team, right? But uh, <laughs> yeah, as far as I know, right now we're concentrating on Elementor and Gutenberg and uh, yeah, but I'm sure that whenever time comes, uh, you will be the first ones to know. So don't hesitate about that. And we have the Facebook community where we try to be as active as possible. And we try to, you know, communicate with you so that we know your mood, your desires, your, you know, requests and stuff. So, yeah, as of now, Elementor and Gutenberg, and then we'll see what, what happens next. <laughs> Can I give my take on that? Sure, sure. I would prefer it if you didn't um, go to other page builders, primarily because I think you lock yourself into a system. I think with Gutenberg, let's just say we've got, um, we want to create a dynamic website and you want to use, you're, you're used to working with Jet Engine and you're used to working with Jet Smart Filters and so on. From my point of view, it makes more sense to forget about the builder and concentrate on using those tools to create the site and having ways of integrating that into the normal WordPress sort of setup. So you can put, if you want your uh, your filters and your search and things like that down the left-hand side or the right-hand side, you use the widgets feature for that. You want to create your loop, you create that inside Jet Engine. And then you either insert that with a short code or you know, if you're using Gutenberg, you just use one of the elements inside there. I think adding it on top of another page builder doesn't really make a huge amount of sense to me. I think it makes much more sense to take yourself out of locking yourself into other ecosystems, you know, like Elementor, it is an ecosystem and having reliance upon that in the same way that people have reliance upon WordPress. It only takes that company to change direction for some reason, close their API, whatever, and that causes problems. Whereas if you're using Gutenberg, 
you know, for all its faults and everything, I would say that would be the better way of going because I think that is more future proof for you than relying upon the page builder. So I think the development time that would be integrated into using it with another page builder that might exist like Oxygen, Divi, or, you know, Bricks or any of those, I think it's better to concentrate on removing reliance from those and stick into Gutenberg as the, as the path forward for especially the things like, like, you know, jet smart filters, jet search, jet, uh, jet engine, those kinds of things. So that would be my take on it. Thank you for sharing, you know, this, this, this was really interesting to listen to. And I'm pretty sure that Andrew Shevchenko is like something noting something down <laughs> while watching the stream, the broadcast. Yeah. So another question uh, from Anthony TI want to build a directory listing, but it's going to hold a lot of content in it. Uh, should I worry about database size or sacrifice CPT for CCTs and have limited functions? Okay, we're going <laughs> to different topic. Um, anyways, you know, if you want, you can answer this question. <laughs> what do you think? I think if, if you, you did it with building a big uh, database driven site with potentially tens of thousands of records, I would question whether WordPress would be the right platform for it. You know, yes, you can do a lot of things inside there. And when you're accustomed to working with it, we, we kind of think I'm used to WordPress, so I can, I can create this kind of thing, but then you should question, should you create this kind of thing? CCTs are definitely a better way of going about it for the fact that, you know, for every single record you include, it's one database entry as opposed to multiple database entries when it comes to using the normal WordPress. Um, but I'd like to say, I would question if, if it's going to be that bigger website, you're either going to need to make sure you've got one heck of a server that can handle that kind of database querying, whether you're using CCTs or whether you're using, you know, integrated WordPress features and look to see if WordPress is the right platform to achieve that on anyway. Okay. Thank you. And, um, yeah, as far as I can see, as for now, there are not so many questions about Gutenberg left. Although there is a question about uh, Jet booking and Jet appointment. Would you like to, to share your experience on that? Uh, Paul, I love Jet Engine, but how do you feel Jet booking and Jet appointment not being actually applicable for any realistic uh, real life purposes? I'm not probably not the best person to answer this because while I've taken a look at using them, they're not something that I focused a huge amount of time on because I've never really had a, a use case or scenario to really worry about, you know, bookings and appointments and things like that. So I couldn't really answer that with any real sort of knowledge, shall we say, and give you an answer that I think is going to be of any real use. So I do apologize, but it's I, I'm more sort of, Jet Engine, Jet Smart Filters, Jet Search, you know, those kinds of tools. That's that's where my real interest lies, is the dynamic side of things. So while I've dabbled in it, I've not really done enough in it to be any kind of authority with what you can and can't do and any limitations it may have. Yeah, and actually, guys, uh, as for Jet Booking and Jet Appointment, I know that it is in the development process right now. And, you know, some of the things that you are, like, eager to have <laughs> in both of these plugins, they probably will be implemented in the near future. So uh, just, you know, be a little bit patient. <laughs> and yeah, we'll see, we'll see uh, with the next update what's going to happen. And I'm also actually really excited to, um, you know, as you know, we record the videos for almost each huge update. So I'm really excited to, to see what's what's going to happen and what, uh, what are the new features? Um, okay. So what do we have here? As far as I can see, there are not so many questions left. So what do you think, Paul? Shall we wrap it up or will we give the guys a chance to write <laughs> their questions? Oh, there is one. Well, just a second. Uh, oh, that's not the, okay. Okay, Jet from Builder is good. It's it's working with uh, Gutenberg. Okay, so Anthony T uh, is asking why has Jet from Builder for Elementor has taken a back seat and Jet from 
for Gutenberg has gotten more care and attention? Well, I don't think that that's kind of like the question for Paul or for me, it's more for our developers. But anyways, um, you know, I can share my thoughts on this topic and then I'll just hand it over to you. Uh, you know, Gutenberg is actually being used by um, some amount of users for sure. And uh, also taking care of them is a really good, you know, thing to do. And plus, as we are talking right now about like the perspectives of the Gutenberg develop development and stuff, I know it's pretty slow in the process of development, but still once you use Gutenberg, as we said before, and if you have like the third party plugins or uh, you know, some things from, you know, the builders and stuff, or just, uh, you know, some separate um, plugins like Jet Engine or Jet Form Builder, or, you know, or any other or smart filters, then it's, um, I think it's a good way to, to go to because this way you have much faster website, which is kind of like optimized and, um, Sorry for that. Yeah, so I think uh, that's 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 a good thing to to look into for sure. And uh, you never know what's going to happen. Let's say next year with Gutenberg, we'll see. Uh, the future will tell. So, yeah, go ahead, Paul. <laughs> what do you think? I, I I I can understand why you've moved. I can't say focus. At the end of the day, you've got to look at what's the best path for. The user base was the best path for the products for the the company and so on moving forward. So to me, it makes sense that you've taken development over to Gutenberg for the form side of things. In the same way, I think with Jet Engine, I was I was really glad to see it, and I I think I've covered it in a video in the past, or if not on a live stream, that I think is the right way to go. Is that this, it is a smarter move to move away from your reliance upon just Elementor and give people the ability to be able to use Gutenberg as an example. So I think it's, it's the right thing to do. Um, yeah, I think that's that's the way I would look at it. Can't speak with the development side of things because I have no idea. <laughs> I have one really, really nice comment that I want to share with you. It just made me smile. So <laughs> yeah, Eric199, um, not a question, but uh, I'd like to say, what gratitude and appreciation I have for Paul, Kate, and the entire Crocoblock team for making these videos. I always fall back to YouTube for help. So thank you very much, Eric, for, for sharing that. And thank you for your, uh, for your comment, because it actually um, is something that drives us, you know, uh, our developers, our team, you know, all the, all the testers, supporters, video makers and then you know designers and then so on all, all the all the team uh, is really inspired by uh, by you guys by your ideas that you share by your requests uh, you know in the github uh, on the github page and in our crocoblock community on on facebook uh, because whenever you see that something that you made actually helps other people to implement their ideas uh, makes their life easier come on <laughs> you know either you need to spend lots of years for you know studying the code and stuff like that and doing it all with your own hands or you can just use some things that yes they they might be a bit um you know they might bring a little bit of bloat as we said before but it makes it more comprehensive more user-friendly and it saves your time so yeah, whenever we think, whenever we see, uh, you know, comments like that, your comments on uh, under the videos on YouTube or in the community and stuff, it really inspires us and and makes our day. So whenever we see that, we understand that we're heading towards the right direction and we're doing the best. Yeah, thank you. Absolutely, absolutely. I, th I think a lot of people need to sort of um, take a step back sometimes and consider how much of an impact upon their lives the kind of tools that are being created, the educational content that's being put out there for free, all those kinds of things, because, you know, it's people like, you know, all the ones behind Crocoblock, behind Elemental, behind all these different things. The driving thing that most of these companies have come up with is how do we make something that's 
historically been more complicated, easier? How can we make it more accessible? And then you've got people like myself that look at it and think, how can I help make it even simpler to understand for people? And, and you know, the, the, the stumbling blocks, the hurdles that I've had to go through to get to the point of understanding how to do X, Y, and Z, that's been the driving force for me to create a lot of the content. That's where it came from originally, is to, if I can spend 10 hours learning something and I can create a video that's 20 minutes long, and then someone can just watch that in 20 minutes, they can pick up the 10 hours with, you know, stumbling and trying to find the answers and things like that, that I've gone through, then that's great. So when you get comments like that, it is absolutely amazing. So thank you very much for that. And uh, I'm sure everybody, like you say, appreciates being appreciated. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. And I, you know, I can I 100 percent sure agree with everything that you just said. And yeah, but whenever I record the videos for for Croco blog, you know, you encounter some couple of bugs, couple of issues. So you're like part time <laughs> tester. So uh, yeah. but anyways, it, it's great because this way we can make the product even better, even more usable and the one that will actually bring joy to to the customers and to the users and to everyone. So that's that's great. Uh, yeah. So a couple of questions left, and I guess we will wrap it up for for today. Um, okay. Uh, the ultimate WordPress guide YouTube channel uh, is asking Paul. I'm on board with everything you've said, but. Uh, for the Gutenberg believers, if you had one thing, in your opinion, what Gutenberg should do next, what would that be? Focus on giving us the basic things that we need. Simple as that. I think that that's the thing that's the biggest problem is give us the simple things that we need to get the job done and make it a more um, integrated design process. You know, like I've said several times in, in this live, the biggest problem you have is there's a disconnect between the back end and the front end. If we can remove that problem, it makes the whole design process easier. And if you can combine that with giving us the basic building block things that we need to create something more than just a blog post or something like that, that would be the thing that I would suggest. That's, a, that's what I would like to see in the short term just to make the whole process easier because it's just such a, a barrier to design at the point in time. Yeah, for sure. And actually, I guess you answered the question of enter right now because uh, he's also asking what would be the next feature of Gutenberg that should be released. So basically, I just answered that it would be great to have same at the back end and same at the front end or at yep. least somewhat same you know just not to be confused and okay there is another question from slim um uh, zoari mai sorry if i mispronounce it uh do you believe wordpress core team could have spent the time they wasted on gutenberg on other first party features, any features you'd love to see in the WordPress core? That's an interesting one. Yeah, I, I think one of the biggest things, I mean, if, if you consider the fact that they've spent three years working on this and they haven't given any love to things like the media management, you know, just simple things that make the whole process of working with WordPress easier. So for me, I can't say there's a specific one thing that I would like to have seen, but I think there's so many areas of WordPress that really need to be revisited. The media management, the actual dashboard itself, user level management, managing what user levels can see inside the dashboard, things that rely upon third party tools at this point in time to do. Make those part of core. Why is it when you set, select a user role, you can't then easily control exactly what they can and can't see? You've got to use a third party tool to do something as simple as that. So I think there's lots of areas that I would like to see them focus on. but Unfortunately, they've focused their time on Gutenberg, so we've kind of have to live with that. Yeah, we cannot change the past. We can just hope for the future. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, okay, guys. So anyways, thank you so much, Paul, for, for visiting our channel, for stopping by uh, for the live stream. 
and live broadcast and for sharing your opinion your thoughts on on, on the gutenberg editor and on all uh, other things that we just discussed today it was a great pleasure having you here and one last question i'd like to ask you what would you like to wish to all uh, the crocoblock users as well as the gutenberg users oh, so you, you didn't prompt me with that, that question at the beginning <laughs> <laughs> What, what I would like to say, I think the thing that popped in my head from the, the sort of conversation we just had now about the gentleman that actually was uh, nice enough to say nice things about us is remember that when you get frustrated with something not working the way that you wanted to, consider the fact that it's much easier to be nice about asking, could this be looked at and rectified or could this be f feature be added than be demanding about it? Because at the end of the day, everybody's working really, really hard to get the best product for everybody so we can all have a much easier time to work on. So I think it's just, my thing would be just, just be nice. Just be nice to everybody. Be polite. Thank you so much, everyone. And we'll see you 